we have started. So uh, today I want to have a little chat really about tenses and we're going to look at tenses in two uh, famous books in 1984 by George Orwell and in Lord of the Flies by William Golding. I want to look at how the tenses are used because if you look, look at how tenses are used, if you watch uh, the natives carefully, you'll pick up some information about how often we use certain tenses and in what situations we use certain tenses. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, so we're going to start with 1984. And we're going to first, what I first want you to notice is that the narrator of 1984 starts with past tense, yeah? It was a bright cold day in April. Now, maybe I need to make this bigger. Um, let's have a look, where do I make this bigger? There we go, there we go. <laughs> let's make this a little bit bigger for you. Hold on, let's hide that. Okay, hopefully you can see that. I'm not sure if anybody's here yet. I didn't warn anybody today. <laughs> so uh, no one's here by the looks of it. Um, so it was a bright cold day in April. Notice we start in past tense. Um, and the clocks were striking 13. Notice we've already got past continuous. Now, this is important. This shows us that narr the narrator is going to relate the whole story in past tenses. Yeah, I mean, it's very common that this is done. And notice that past continuous is very often used at the beginning of a story or at the beginning of a paragraph. And there's a good reason for this. Yeah, quite often when you start a story, you want to put the reader in the middle of uh, a few different actions. So you say something like this. You say, um, our story starts on the 13th of January, or, or our story started, sorry, let's start in past tenses. Our story started on the 13th of January. It was a beautiful day and the, bir the birds were singing, the sun was shining. Yeah, um, uh, and everybody was getting ready for work and for school. And notice you're putting the reader right in the middle of all three things of the birds singing, the sun shining, and also everybody getting ready for school. So it's used at the start very often because we want to put the reader in that position, in the middle of several um, actions. OK, good morning, Romelia, and good morning, Thomas. Um, so you will see past continuous quite often at the beginning and remember that to any native all were striking means is they were in the middle of striking 13 here yeah? so maybe they were on the sixth strike or the seventh strike or the eighth strike but they hadn't finished striking 13 okay so quite often you'll see past continuous at the start now let's carry on so winston um his chin nuzzled into his breast um now that's not actually a verb um, it, it looks like a verb, but it's a participle describing chin. It's not what the chin was doing, it's describing the chin. So this is a type of absolute phrase. Um, it's not the main verb of the sentence. The main verb is slipped. Winston slipped quickly through. So we've got past simple again. And we will see past simple more often than any other tense when the narrator's speaking. And this is because he can't use present tenses now. Yeah, if he uses present tenses, it puts us in the narrator's world of today. But that's not the world he's relating. He's telling us about a world in the past. And so it's literally impossible for the narrator to use present simple when he's telling us about Winston and all of those events. And we can't use really any of the present tenses. And we'll see this. Let's quickly read a little bit further. So we've got it was the clocks were striking. Um, Winston slipped. So we've had past simple, past continuous, past simple. The hallway smelt, past simple. At one end of it, a colored poster, too large for indoor display, had been tacked. Now, this is the first past perfect sentence we've had. So first thing to remember is you don't need past perfect often. Please don't think, hello, Samia. Please don't think that because you use past perfect not very often, that maybe you need to use it more often. That's not necessarily the case. You don't use past perfect anywhere near as often as past simple. And um, notice that the reason why we use past perfect here is because George wants us to know that the poster 
had been tacked long before the hallway smelt of boiled cabbage. Yeah, of boiled, sorry, of boiled cabbage. So we're just trying to emphasize that this action had acted. This happened before the right cold day. It happened before the clocks were striking 13. It happened before April. Yeah. So this is why we use this tense. Now we'll carry on and we'll just see past simple a lot. Yeah. It depicted past simple. Um, let's go quite fast. Uh, um, Winston made for the stairs, past simple. Make for means go towards. It's a phrasal verb. It's in my book. It was past simple. Um, it was past. Oh, it was seldom working. Um, so here we've got past continuous. Yeah, it was working, but not very often. It was seldom working. Um, and uh yeah, uh, here it's because the, the lift is temporarily working. So we're emphasizing a temporary state and continue, uh, past continuous and present continuous often do that. OK, and at present, the electric current was cut off, past simple. It was part of the economy drive, past simple. The flat was seven flights up, past simple. Who was 39, past simple. Had, past simple. Yeah, can you see it's just past simple most of the time. Went, past simple um gazed past simple was past simple okay now look at this it was one of those pictures which are so contrived now we've got present simple and notice the only reason we've got present simple here is because the narrator can talk about these pictures in the present tense he's not talking about winston anymore yeah, he's talking about the picture. So he's not relating his story. And this is why we can move into present tense. I think this is very important when you're reading books. You ought to look out for this, that most of the time they'll probably tell the story in past simple with a little bit of past continuous and past perfect thrown in there. You'll only come back to present tenses if they stop relating the story and talk about something else. So here yeah, we're just talking generally. It was one of those pictures, this big brother picture, which are so contrived that the eyes follow. Present simple again. You about when you move. Present simple again. Yeah. And so here we got present simple because we're not talking about the story. We're talking about the picture. So Big Brother is watching you. This was written on the picture. So we can certainly have present continuous here because it's written in the picture. We're not relating the story. We're saying what is written on the picture. OK, so here we can have present simple and even present continuous. And then we've got past simple. The caption beneath it ran. OK, let's keep going. Inside the flat, a fruity voice was reading out. Notice again, past continuous at the start of the paragraph, because we want to put the reader in the middle of the story. And so we're saying that um, he, the flat fruity voice was in the middle of reading out a list of figures which had something to do with the production of pig, pig iron. So here we're back in past simple. The voice came past simple, um, which formed past simple. Winston turned past simple. The voice sank past simple. The words were past simple. Yet you can see that it's mostly past simple. So hi, Elmira. Hi, Sabi. And hi, Amit. But you can see that most of the time it's past simple. And this is because we use past simple for one thing happened. Then the next thing happened. Then the next thing happened. Then the next thing happened. We use past simple for consecutive events. We use past continuous when you're in the middle of that event. And we use past perfect when we go before the past simple. OK, the, the telly screen, it was called past simple, could be dimmed. Well, it's modal verb in the passive, but it's still past simple, could. But there was past simple. He moved past simple, nearly emphasised past simple, um, which were past simple. His hair was past simple roughened um participle sorry <laughs> um and okay right at the end and the cold of the winter that had just ended now <clears throat> what i want you to notice here is the word just and that's because we give you this word we teachers we do this word as a signal word for perfect tenses now, usually students just learn that already, yet, just, ever, never, for, since. Usually students just learn that they're for 
present perfect, but that's not true. Yeah, these signal words are for present perfect if you're speaking in present tenses, if it's true now, but they are for past perfect when you are relating a narrative. And so if you use any of those words in a narrative like uh, George has just done, notice I can use it in present perfect, yeah, has just done, because I'm talking about now. I've I have just read this text to you. And so George has just used this past perfect tense. But when you're in a narrative and you use just, you've got to use past perfect. Yeah. And so you say something like this. Um, I met Steve last night. He had just spoken to his mother. Yeah. And you see, I met past simple and he had just goes before met. The spoken happened before met. And for that reason, just is a past perfect signal word in any narrative. And I think that that's important. I don't think everybody learns it like that. But please don't think that those present perfect signal words are just for present perfect. They're actually for past perfect as well when you're in a narrative. And I can prove it to you because what I'll do is we'll now look at this text and we'll look for the um, had and the past participle. And what you'll see is that very often with past perfect, you can see a signal word, just like with present perfect. Um, so good morning, Elmira, and uh, good morning, Amit. Um, so let's uh, let's carry on. It's tenses today, guys. It's not gerunds or anything like that. But I'm sure I've got so many videos on YouTube about gerunds that there's probably something there that you can find if you do want to learn about that topic. So, uh, yeah, we've got had just ended. And notice it's at the end of the paragraph as well. I think that's important, too, because I think very often at the end of the sentence, you suddenly use past perfect. For example, reported speech. He said, he told me, he explained that he had just spoken to his mother. Yeah. And it's very often after reporting verbs that you go back before the reporting verb and you need to use past Perfect. OK, let's keep going. So outside, the world looked cold, past simple, down in the street, little eddies of wind were whirling, past continuous. Again, the writer wants to put us in the middle of that scene. Yeah, just like here we had it at the start of the paragraph so that the reader was in the middle of this voice reading out. Here we're using it so that the reader is in the middle of this scene where the dust and the paper is whirling around everywhere. And at the beginning, we had the clocks were striking 13 to put the reader in the middle of this dong, dong, dong. Yeah, it puts the reader right in the middle of that process. OK, so we've got were whirling to put the middle reader in the middle of the story. And though the sun was shining, look, there we go. The birds were singing. The sun was shining. Even George likes this kind of start to a story. And the sky a harsh blue. There seemed. Notice that's past simple. Yeah. Of course, sun was shining. That's got to be past continuous because the sun doesn't shine for one moment. It shines all day, hopefully. And you're in the middle of that um, when, when you're doing something. OK, the posters were plastered, past simple, gazed, past simple. There was past simple. Once again, we've got present continuous when we describe what's written on the sign, because this isn't really the story. It's a description of something. And it's a description of what is written on something. And so we can certainly use present continuous here. The dark eyes looked past simple. Um, and then we've got some participles, torn, flapped, covering. Oh, no, flapped is the verb. OK, and that's past simple. Um, skimmed, past simple. Hovered, past simple. And darted, past simple. Was, past simple. And it didn't matter, past simple, only the thought police mattered. So you can see that most of the time you're using past simple. And I hope you can already see as well that on the next sentence, right at the beginning of the paragraph, yet again, we've got past continuous to put the reader in the middle of this telescreen and the voice babbling. It puts us right in the middle of that. So I think that this, this story can give you a very clear uh, description of when we use past continuous for sure. It's very often at the start to put the reader right in the middle 
of that particular action or scene. And I think it shows you very clearly when we use past perfect as well. It's when you go back. It's not often. It's not often. But it's when you go back to earlier. And it's very often with signal words. And let me prove that to you right now. Let's look for had. Yeah. And let's go to the first one. He had a varicose ulcer. OK, it had something to do with. That's just past simple. Then we've got the one we've just seen had just ended. That's past perfect, but it's got a signal word. So that's that makes it a bit easier. So you had to live. That's just past simple. OK, look at this one had always been quite like this. Now, this is a, a little bit like is a never when you use them in present perfect. Yeah. If you say something like this. I have always liked that person. That means that in all your life, ever since you first met, you have always liked him. It's an extended period of time that continues to now. Yes. Yeah? So we've got to use present perfect. And that's why we have to use present perfect with always. Oh, sorry, we have to use past perfect with always here because we're in a narrative. This isn't a true story. The narrator's already spent a long time telling us lots of other parts of the story in pasts and now he's talking about the London in this story and he's telling us that uh, well we're not sure if London I mean in the present tense we'd say I am not sure if London has always been like this but in past tense we'd have to say I'm not sure whether London had uh, so I wasn't sure whether London had had always been quite like that. Yeah? And so that's the way it works with uh, with past perfect. Very often you should be looking out for these signals and always is a signal. I agree we can use always with present simple, but it's a different meaning. When you say I always like, I don't know, I, I always like uh, fish and chips Yeah, um, for tea. Yeah, something like that. That means always in the past, present and future. I always will. I always have. And I still do. Yeah. But um, when you say I have always liked, that means in all of your life un from that first moment when you liked it until now. OK, so it's a different meaning than always and present simple. Um, let's keep going on the hads just to see. OK, had cleared where the bombs had cleared. So that this is because it's uh, earlier than um, the past simple, the plaster swirled in the air, but the bombs had cleared this earlier. OK, had sprung up, had never been. Look at that signal right in the middle of it. Yeah, that's a signal for present perfect never. Yeah, I have never read War and Peace. I have never seen The Wolf of Wall Street, whatever. Yeah, because you put it like that in present tenses, when you're reporting that, when you're telling that as a story, you'd need to put it into past perfect. So just like I have never read War and Peace, if you're telling a story, you'd say something like this. David told me he had never read War and Peace. So you can see this never, ever. These are very useful signal words, not only for present perfect, but also for past perfect. Yeah, if you are telling a narrative and you use, if you're retelling some kind of story and you use one of the signal words, it's probably going to be in past perfect 99% of the time. And you can see this again and again and again. If you look for had through the book, you've got had set. That's just ordinary past perfect. Had sacrificed. Now, OK, look at this one. The reason why we need this had sacrificed is because of by. Yeah, by me leaving. No, sorry. Because of at this time, by leaving the ministry at this time of day, he has. Oh, OK, no, it's not by this time. Sorry, guys. It's by, by leaving. I was, I'm a bit, I got a bit confused there. But um, still, the reason why we need had sacrificed is because it goes earlier than he crossed the room into the tiny kitchen. He had sacrificed his lunch in the ca canteen earlier than that. OK, um, so let's go on to had got uh, had the sensation of past simple okay had probably been intended firstly notice that the adverb is between the first verb and the second verb like i keep uh, telling telling you about yeah i keep saying that put the adverb between the first verb and the second verb um and secondly uh when the facts were there yeah, so again we're talking about the intent these flats had been intended before Winston was now sitting. 
yeah and so winston was now sitting is is later than ham had probably been intended so we used the had to go back in er, earlier into the story again okay had suggested had also been suggested notice that the also goes between the first and the second verb i just like to revise some of the stuff that i've already spoken about because it can be useful okay and look at the next one had just taken there's that signal again guys just is a signal for past perfect as well as for present perfect just like never for since yeah all of these other ones as well if I I just click a few okay he had seen it lying around in the window had been stricken had given uh had slipped had carried had procured had gone i, I don't see many signals on these just at a glance although i'm sure if i looked more carefully i would find some signals okay no not that one um but anyway you can see the past perfect is very often with signals so let's have a look at present perfect now now i want to tell you something first there's no way present perfect will be used in any part of the narrative and what i mean is when the narrator's speaking he's not going to use present perfect unless he starts talking about something like a picture as we just had we just had when he was talking about the picture yeah it was one of those pictures which are contrived maybe he will use a metaphor in which case he can use present simple yeah he might say um something like um uh, the streets were as were filthy um like a beggar who uh never changes his socks yeah i don't know it's a terrible sentence but you can see never changes i just want to show you that if you say like a beggar then you're immediately speaking about something where you can use present simple because it's not part of the story um so i think that that's important now let's have a look for some present perfect for example let's look for there's been now here here we see present perfect yeah there's only two examples of it isn't that interesting all of those loads and loads and loads of examples of past perfect and not that much present perfect in the whole book and that's because most of it's a narrative but when you have characters talking that's when you'll see present perfect and we'll see this with lord of the flies as well in the second but we see present perfect when there's speech and this is important because when you the time when you actually use present perfect in english is when you're in conversation with people it really is it's when you're talking to people that you need to use present perfect um it's not when you're telling a story but when you're relating things from your day things that are important now and so here we see there's been no paper like that made oh i dare say 50 years he means of course for 50 years and that's why it's present perfect there has been no paper like that made for oh look there's a four <laughs> for 50 years so that's the signal guys and because it's in speech it's present perfect not past perfect yeah, this is this is two people talking. It's Winston talking to the guy in the shop, forgotten his name. Um, but they're talking about paper. And that's why they suddenly break into present perfect. There has been no paper like that for 50 years. Let's look at the next there's been or he's been or she's been. There's been a lot of tea about lately. Look at that signal word. I just warned yesterday about this word. Yeah, it's funny how these things just crop up again and again and again. Lately is present perfect. Or oh, it's a perfect tense signal. Let's not say present perfect because if you're telling a narrative, if you're retelling a story, then you'll probably need past perfect with lately. Yeah, he told me that he hadn't done much homework lately. Yeah, he told me that he hadn't been doing. That would also be possible. Um, but that's very rare that's very rare that perfect continuous tense notice we have not seen it one time so far today and that shows you how rare it is but the perfect tenses aren't that rare they're actually quite common nowhere near as common as past simple and present simple and present continuous as well uh, or past continuous but they are pretty common okay let's come back to uh so you can see that there's been they're both signal words and they're both speech look at that they are both speech they're not part of the story let's try something else now like apostrophe s had because that'll give us some present perfect okay o'brien's had okay, filled up a patch of 
It would be an interesting thing if Nova O'Brien's had. Okay, so we've got pa past perfect here, not present perfect. So that's uh, okay. That one hasn't really helped us find any. Let's try it. I've had. The more men you have had, the more I love you. Okay, quite a strange part of the story, but you can see here that he's talking to his girlfriend. Yeah, he's talking. I've forgotten her name now. I can't believe I've forgotten her name. I quite like her as well in the book, but um, he's talking to his girlfriend. And so, of course, he needs present perfect. The more you have had in your life, the more you have ever had, he means. And that's why it needs to be present perfect. Let's look at the other one. OK, look, it's speech again, guys. Notice it's speech again. It's not part of the narrative. And I have had four children in my life. Yeah. Here you're speaking about how many children you have had. Yeah. So I am 42 and I have had two children. Yeah. Oh, my wife has had two children. That sounds a bit more normal. Yeah. <laughs> I never gave birth to anybody. But I have never given. Sorry, guys. I have never given birth to anybody. Yeah. And we put that in reported speech as Dave told us that he had never. We put it into past perfect. I think understanding this really helps you with perfect tenses. It makes you realize that present perfect and past perfect are the same thing. But they're used. You use past perfect when you're in a narrative, when you're in past tenses. You use present perfect for now when you're in conversation with someone and you're talking about something that is important right now um, so let's have a look at lord of the flies now and see if i can really convince you that you won't see present perfect in the story uh, in the narrative you'll see past perfect but you will see present perfect when the kids are talking to each other when you've got direct speech you'll see present perfect and when you've got indirect speech basically reported speech you'll see past perfect so look out for those signal words because very often they're there for both of them but you'll see past perfect in the narrative and present perfect in the dialogue. Yeah. Remember that in books, you'll see this all the time. So let's look at, have a look at Lord of the Flies now. This is Lord of the Flies by William Golding. And let's have a look. For, OK, let's look for present perfect first. First present perfect. When I have had a bathe and something to eat, I will just trek over there, uh, trek over to the other side of the mountain and see if I can see any traces. Now. Firstly, I want you to notice that uh, you've got a when here and you've got a present perfect. So let's quickly deal with this, because I often tell students, if you say, ask or know when, never use present perfect. And this sentence seems to contradict what I've been teaching uh, my students. Let's get it bigger for you guys. Sorry. This seems to contradict what I've been teaching my students. So let me make myself very, very clear. You can see when with present perfect as you do in this sentence. But this is a future time clause. Yeah, it's like when when you have finished your homework, you can go out and play. Um, and with this with these future time clauses, when you want to emphasize that it's only when you have completed your homework, it's only when you have already had a bath, yeah, had a bathe in the water, and when you have had something to eat, that you will just trek over. So sometimes when and present perfect is possible, yeah, and I'm sorry if you've always you if you have always thought that that's not true but it is when and, and perfect is possible and it's in those future time clauses yeah um and it's really only for those situations when you want to emphasize completion because perfect tenses emphasize completion at that moment past perfect does that and present perfect does that they both emphasize completion um so uh I think I think that's important that you you do have a when there, but then you've got present perfect. OK, but notice that it's certainly when characters are talking to each other, it's dialogue for present perfect. Yeah, let's go to the next one and see if it's dialogue. OK, if I blow the conch and they don't come back, then we have had it. Yes, it is in speech. Yeah, I don't know who's talking. Maybe Ralph, maybe Piggy. Can't remember. Let's go to the next one. Oh, look, it's in dialogue again. I have had as much as I can stand. Let's look at the next one. It's in dialogue again. And we had our meat. 
again is in dialogue again we have had a fight with the others and if he gets waxed See, we have had it again. It's in dialogue. OK, maybe you still don't believe me. So maybe I need to prove it to you with um, the, the he or she form. Let's try that. OK, there aren't any with the she, he or she form, but let's try it with Bean. Let's try it with Bean because that's still present perfect. I bet nobody has been here before. Before is a signal because you mean nobody has ever been here. Yeah. And so before is a signal word. Don't forget these signal words. Um, and notice we're using it in dialogue. Yeah, dialogue, guys. Use present perfect in dialogue. That's when we use present perfect. Don't use it in a narrative. Don't use it with all those past simples in a narrative. Now, I'm not saying that you'll never see past simple and present perfect in the same sentence because you will. There are some situations which are really obvious that I can tell you about where you will see present perfect and past simple. Let me give you one since yeah i have known him present perfect since i was 14 past simple and you always see that with since you always see it you always see present perfect since past simple or you see since past simple comma present perfect yeah you'll see one of those two so don't think that i'm saying you never see past and present tenses in the same sentence you you do you really do but I am telling you that you'll see present perfect in dialogue in the stories and you'll see past perfect in the narrative, in the retail. That's certainly the case. And you can prove it to yourself by taking any book you like that you've got as a PDF and then do do what I'm doing. See what, what you can find. So there has been it's always present perfect, it's always speech. Again, this is dialogue. Jack has been everywhere. It's, it's present perfect for dialogue. Um, again, it's dialogue. He has been, what does it say? He, he has been, he gets all excitedly, he has been tied for hours. Yeah, again, it's dialogue. And the last one, again, oh, I think we've gone round in the circle now, but again, it's dialogue. Um, yeah, I don't see the four there. But anyway, you, you can see that it's dialogue for present perfect. What about past perfect? What about, um, let's look for had been, none, okay, none for. OK, let's just try had been then. OK, we've got some had been. Ralph had been deceived before now. No, look here. This is not the narrative. I'm oh, sorry. This is not the dialogue. This is the narrative. And that's why we use past perfect. Am I driving this message home clearly enough, guys? Could, do you understand what I'm trying to tell you? Because I think loads of students don't realise this. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe everybody realises this and it's really obvious. But I'm not so sure of that. And uh, tell me if I if I'm helping you to understand something which perhaps you hadn't noticed, please let me know because I can see your comments. And, um, you know, if you have any questions about this, though, yeah, not about gerunds and infinitives, not about participles today. <laughs> That'll be another day. But if you've got any comments about tenses, now's the time to ask. I'm dealing with tenses today. Yeah, and so it's a good time to ask about tenses right now. Um, I get loads of questions about tenses and then I do a video about tenses and no one's got any questions for me about tenses. When I do the video on gerunds, you'll all stop asking about gerunds and you'll start asking me about tenses and say, please do a video on tenses today. Um, so if you have questions, guys, now about tenses, now is the time to ask. Um, so you can see. We've got this first past perfect and it's not in the dialogue. It's in the narrative and it's got a signal word before now. Yeah, that's a signal for perfect tense because it's telling us that Ralph had been deceived. That's complete. Yeah, because it was before now and it was earlier than the other past simple verbs that we've got. Let's go to the next one. His trousers had been lowered for an obvious purpose. Okay, I think he's going to toilet. Um, so uh, here we're going back before the past simple. But again, notice there's no dialogue here, guys. It's the narrative. This is part of the narrative. And that's why we see past perfect. And then we see past perfect again had only been pulled back. Um, and then we see past perfect a little bit further down here, I think, one more time. OK, can't find it there. But notice we've got had appeared, had been lowered and had only been pulled back yeah halfway so we've got loads of past perfect there and it's all part of the narrative none of it is dialogue yeah that's what i'm really trying to drive home present perfect for dialogue for now past perfect for narrative for 
when you're telling when you're telling that story about what actually happened. Um, let's have a look with some next ones. So where they had been gorging. Okay, guys, I want to alert you to the fact that that is the first time we have seen past perfect continuous today. We haven't seen it until now. Yeah, and so now's the time to understand that we really rarely use this tense, incredibly rarely. And so don't be using it too often. Um, but yeah, you, you can see we need this uh, past perfect because it's going before um, the three small children appeared. Yeah, before they appeared, they had been gorging on fruit in the forest. Um, notice we've got a past continuous here because it's near the start of the paragraph and the writer's putting us in the middle of that process. Yeah, let's keep going and just look at some of the other have beens. OK, first thing I want you to notice is this is not dialogue. It's narrative. What intelligence had been shown? Um, OK, again, it's not dialogue. It's narrative. His sandy hair considerably longer than it had been when they dropped in. Yeah, this is going back earlier than before they arrived on the island. Um, again, it's not dialogue, it's narrative, yeah, where somebody had been trying to build a little house or hut. This was earlier than uh, the past simple verb. And do notice there's a lot of past perfect here. Look, had expected, had trotted, had followed, had stood, um, had been trying. There's another past perfect continuous. So William Golden, just like George Orwell, uses probably more past perfect than present perfect. Now, in real life, you use more present perfect than past perfect because you're often in dialogue. But in a, in a story, in a narrative, you'll see more perfect than present perfect. And it's because you're telling a story. So don't be fooled. If you're, uh, you know, if you're an avid reader, you might think that, oh, the English use past perfect more than present perfect. It's not true. It's only true in narratives. And so, OK, maybe you're the kind of person who loves telling stories. You might use past perfect more than present perfect. But generally speaking, we use present perfect more than past perfect because we're so often in dialogue. But in a story, you might see the opposite. You, you very often do. You see past perfect more often than present perfect. And it's because you're in a narrative. OK, so you can see loads of past perfect there. OK, look at this next next bit of past perfect and you see the signal word ever since then. Yeah. Ever since that moment, he had been. OK, uh, so do look out for the signals. And no, it's not dialogue. It's narrative. It's narrative. It's not dialogue. Um, in fact, that one's third conditional. So that's another good reason for using past perfect. Um, uh, blah, 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 blah. There had been none. Had So you've got had appeared, had been none. So you can see quite a bit of it there. And again, it's narrative. It's not dialogue. Um, again, it's narrative. And look at that bit, bit past perfect continuous. William Golding tends to use past perfect continuous more perhaps than Orwell. Um, but still, uh, yeah, it's not that much. OK. And it's only in the narrative. OK, next one in the narrative. Is there a signal word there? Can't see one. Again, it's the narrative. It's not the dialogue. Um, and you've got a bit of subjunctive there as if the light had been turned off. So that's why we got past perfect. Yeah, because of the as if um, there had been for numberings. Numberings, sorry, um, past perfect. Again, it's narrative. It's not dialogue. Again, it's narrative. It's not dialogue. OK, I think you've got the message. Yeah, I'm tired of saying it, but you can see it's narrative. So I hope that that has been useful. I just wanted to show you something that you can look out for and you can prove is true by reading books. Yeah, you can prove to yourself that past perfect, past, past perfect is used for narrative and present perfect is used for dialogue. Yeah. And I think you can apply this to your everyday experiences. When you're just in a dialogue with someone, use present perfect. When you're telling them an intricate story with details, use past perfect. Yeah. Not that often. You're mainly using past simple, maybe past continuous, probably more than past perfect. But um, only in narratives, please. Only in these. So somebody's asked, it's not clear when to use past perfect versus past perfect simple in a sentence. If the action is complete, but it is not known when, what tense has to be used? So what tense should we use if we don't know when the action was completed? 
we use pass perfect if it's complete before a pass simple action. Simple as that. Yeah, well, okay, it's not that simple, I agree. But let me give you a little story. I'm going to tell you a little story because I have to tell you a story to use Path Perfect. Yeah, I can't do it any other way. I have to tell you a story. So I'm going to tell you a little story. This morning, I woke up. Yeah. I got out of bed. Um, I woke up. Let's take away the pronoun. Let's do a list of verbs. I woke up, got out of bed, bagged a comb across my head. Now, notice that really we've got three consecutive actions. They're three past simple verbs because they're three consecutive actions. Yeah, and that's why we use past simple, because past simple is one thing, then the next thing, then the next thing. You only use past perfect when you go back in the story. And so if I want to talk about something that happened before I woke up, then I use past perfect or before the other two verbs, by the way, or before I um, um, where is where's what I've written? Why is it not there? OK, what I just wrote hasn't appeared. That's weird. I must have been writing to myself. So um, let me write that. Oh, yeah, there it is. Restream. Yeah, I did write it. Sorry for the spelling mistake. So this morning I woke up, got out of bed, dragged a comb across my head. That's one action, then the next action, then the next action. To use past perfect, we have to go earlier. So something like this. This morning I woke up, got out of bed, dragged a comb across my head, went to work. Yeah, next action. And then realised, next action, that I had forgotten. Next Is this the next action? No. Yeah. When did you forget? You forgot actually earlier. You forgot when you were leaving. Your I had forgotten. I don't know my briefcase. Yeah. Let's put it another way that I had left. That I had left. Maybe this will make it easier for some people. That I had left my briefcase at home. And we say had forgotten, had left because this happened before you got to work. Yeah. So that's why we use past perfect. Notice that I don't know when here. The person who asked this question said it's not clear if you don't know when. I don't know when. I'm not saying that it was when this happened. I'm, it's not about when. When's not. The, I, I, I'm not sure. Maybe you're mixing up present perfect with past per, past simple. But past perfect is not about when. You don't need to know when to use past perfect. You can just say something like this. I told him that. I don't know. I told him that I had hadn't had my vaccine. Yeah. I told him that I hadn't had my vaccine. How about this? I told him that I had never had a vaccine. I'd never had any vaccines. Yeah. And you need that. You need past perfect, even though you don't know when. Yeah, I'm really past perfect is for periods it's not about when when is a single moment it's for past simple or something like that um periods are perfect tenses usually yeah we have been married for five years he told me that he had been married for five years yeah periods of time you don't very often know when i mean uh you know it's not even about a question of when it's a question of how long and so, uh, yeah, it's going to do with when. So I hope that's answered your, your question. We're going to stop there for today. Um, but please, if you want to get a copy of this lesson, then it will be available on my website. I'll be taking it down from YouTube because it's a waste of time I'm putting it on YouTube. Yeah, no point at all. So I'm going to put it right up on my website. And uh, if you uh, want to support me, please, you can buy my books. Obviously got lots of stuff that I mentioned today are in the two books that I've written. So visual phrasal verbs or whoops, it is, lights are falling down or grammar in theory and in practice. So you can do that or um, or uh, you can just come to the website. You can like uh, like the stuff that I do. It doesn't really matter really actually on social media, but um, you can certainly subscribe and uh, let your friends know about these free classes. I'm going to try and keep them going on a daily basis. And uh, I do take questions, but I always find there aren't many questions about the topics that I choose 
when I choose, you know, they're usually questions about other topics. So you try to ask questions about the topic that's under discussion and we'll do things like that. OK, thanks, Mary. Um, we use it before past, something that happened before an action in the past. But yeah, exactly. I totally agree. That's a good way of understanding it. When you go back before past simple, you need past perfect. It's usually reported speech. It really is. He told me, he said, he explained. That's the time when you very often see it. OK, and good morning, Humpty Dumpty. OK, see you all next time then, guys. Thanks for coming and I hope to see you all.